to say like that. Yeah. And we are live. Good afternoon, everybody. Good day to you all. Welcome to Reasons to Speak on Secular TV. It's February the 3rd, and this is our usual Tuesday afternoon spot, and so we're going to get going. Um, I just want to let you know and remind you that uh, you are watching Secular TV on the web, and the goal of Secular TV is to help promote unique and interesting content while focusing on a variety of diverse ideas that appeal to various groups in the secular community, and that's what we're part of. Uh, today, uh, we have my co-host Lou with us, and President of Secular TV, Randy, the foxhole atheist. I'd like to welcome both of you. Lou? Yeah, oh yeah, just to know, as our one viewer already knows, we now have, this so those for like the recorded part, we have live comments, and those are only here while the show is live. After the show goes off air, uh, live comments disappear, and the regular comment section comes back, so, so if you want that live interaction, you need to be here live with us. All right. That's great. Great. Brandy, welcome. How's it going? Very good. So Randy, um, Secular TV, it looks like it's um, busted out of the box, and uh, I'm trying to keep up with it, it's, it's too quick for me, man, it's just it's running away. So, it's your dream, is that? Yeah, it kind of is, we're growing really fast, uh, I always hoped we would, and it seems like that's panning out pretty well for us. Uh, the content creators that have come on board seem really happy and seem to be enjoying everything. And uh, I can't say how much we appreciate all of you um, since Sid and Lou are two of those content creators. But uh, yeah, it's just, I can't even explain. Like, I'm almost, um, uh, I, I hope for it. Uh, you know what I mean? But to see it actually kind of panning out and happening in reality. I see how many people are excited about it. It's really cool. Oh, yeah. I had some questions since we got you live. Uh, sure. Geeky tech stuff. Um, that have come on board seem really happy and seem to be enjoying oh, everything. I don't know. Just and, to, uh, I can't say how much. I'm playing the video in the background. Of, um, since Sid and Lou are two of the. Oh, crap. Why does it always do that to me? Because you got the uh, window open. The no, I put, open. It on, I put it on mute. I think it's my mouse because my mouse double clicks on me when I don't want it to mm. because I always push it on mute, and I do that just so I can track and make sure everything looks good for the viewers, but I, it's supposed to be on mute. So that's the third time I've done that in a month. I think we need to make a bedding pool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. No, right, the so you had a question. Yeah. So we now have over 500 subscribers on Secular TV. So were you planning on uh, getting a custom URL? Because I think we qualify now. Yes, absolutely. Um, we're, we're waiting on YouTube to send us the, uh, the link. So uh, once you qualify, they'll send you a little notification in your uh, settings. And and I don't know if you haven't actually sent sent that to us yet, so Yeah, I'm waiting for that. <laughs> and, and we got and our surprise guest, the mental health just joined us. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, Kenny Malcolm Mental Outlaw. Hey. Say hi to everybody. Guys. Good, good, good. You you know Randy, you know Lou, you know me. Yeah. Hopefully. And uh well, we haven't actually met. I, I saw the episode. Um Ah, but. Mental Outlaw, meet President Randy, President yes, of who's, who's this nice bearded gentleman? <laughs> <laughs> I am Randy uh, Bevan, also known as the Foxhole Atheist on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Nice to meet you, man. You too. So, so Secular TV is uh, kind of Randy's brainchild. <laughs> right. Uh, he's one of the three parents. There's yeah. some weird atheist DNA experiments going on. That's what it is. <laughs> well, now, as long as it's not three daddies, because as we know from the Bible, having more than one daddy is not a good thing. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Because we've been going over some some of the silly religious ideas. Fine. Oh, crud. Yeah, the 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 reason I was I was originally invited a mental outlaw is because Mike was supposed to be here, but he decided to run away to be a rodeo clown. So I'll we'll be here today. <laughs> That's always a good time. You know, Mike's got an appearance on a show tomorrow and having a lot on his plate. You know, we, we're really active behind the scenes. And sometimes I, you know, wonder how much people realize just how busy, how much it takes behind the scenes to make all this work correctly. But, um, no, he's going to do an appearance tomorrow on uh, uh, Atheist on Air. So Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, I can probably forward that link along or you can or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, but Randy here's the guy to talk to because he's the most sane of the three founders, I think, just in my opinion. Uh. Mm. Uh, well, well, I yeah. don't know. I'm a little bit crazy myself, so I, we might get along on some weird, psycho, crazy-ass lunatic level. It's actually interesting you describe me that way. Uh, you know, our family... My wife and I, we're both kind of weird people. We, we accept this. We embrace it. Our kids are weird. We get it. Um, and so, I, I don't know. We're, we definitely think differently. But, you know, I said this uh, to Dad one time, and then I ended up, uh, I wrote it on the door of my shop outside that uh, the Steve Jobs Steve Jobs quote that I always enjoyed I don't know if I'll get this exact but he said that uh, only those crazy enough to think they can actually change the world ever do mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes you have to dream big you really do you gotta dream big and you gotta plan big and you gotta have huge ambition um, I think that's sometimes what it takes to make something just like this work and the fact that it's you know the idea was ambitious, but the fact that I've been able to find other ambitious content creators and other ambitious leaders like Sid, um, that's really what's making all this work. And so if we can keep finding people like that, uh, there's really not a limit. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, feel what you're saying. I was just uh, – part of the reason I was late is because I was reading – uh, some of the comments on my videos. I made one on Sunday that's got close to a thousand views now, and I was surprised it kind of, I guess you could say, blew up that quickly. I wasn't expecting to get that many views on it. So, yeah, I definitely feel you with the whole um, aim big type thing. Oh, yeah. and then we can break this little news bit. This Sunday, uh, somebody, somebody uh, Mental Outlaw knows uh, from his town is. Uh, Pastor Big Daddy Slap a Bitch volunteered to go through the, the whammy gauntlet. So I'll post a link to that somewhere around around this video somewhere if you're interested in seeing Pastor Slap a Bitch go through the whammy gauntlet. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to be a hell of a challenge for Lou. I mean, you know, I've, I've met this pastor guy. I've had some debates with him, and I have yet to win a single one. This guy's got... He's got some tricks up his sleeve. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's all about the viewers, too, because the, the final vote goes to the viewers. The final vote comes from the viewers. Yeah. So and I think that's another great thing about all this, and that's why uh, the secular TV concept, the, the platform, I actually like that we have all these different people that know how to do all kinds of different things. Uh, like, like I contributed a little bit on how to get these damn comments working. Yes. And, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lou. And and then I've picked up so so many tricks from from our other content creators. Like you got uh, D Wayne showed us how to use this this free pain in the ass uh, like Photoshop program. Yeah. Yeah, Gimp, it is appropriately named. <laughs> well, I don't know, man. I think that um, all this uh, all this coming together and all the work that uh, is put in and all the thought that's put in into Secular TV, what we forgot to say is what our our objectives are. What, what What's the objective of Secular TV? 
Well, um, I like to put this as the you know we have this this the sub slogan, which is it's a network where free speech is taken seriously. And what we mean by that is we want content creators to feel like they can come in and do their show. Uh, Sid and Lou here, if they want to tap, tackle some taboo subject, we don't even want them to feel like they need to ask us to do that. Our, our network's not interested in you know, screening that kind of stuff. As long as you're not violating the YouTube terms of service, Google Plus terms of service, uh, we're good to go. So do your show and have fun with it. But uh, beyond that, really, the, the the broader goal is to to find secular-minded content creators of a variety of types, um, and be a springboard for for those producers to uh, help make them a bigger voice in the community. We know there's not enough secular-minded voices out there, and certainly not enough that are willing to be really vocal and. and and so we need to find the ones who are and help stand them up, prop them up, uh, be a support chain for them, and just flood the flood the world with secular-minded opinions. Um, one of the other yes. big things is that it's not just uh, YouTube content creators. It's not like live broadcasts. We're doing pre-recorded stuff. We're looking to promote up-and-coming bands. Uh, we have artists and mu all kinds of other music coming up. I mean... There's a lot of different things we're trying to do, and so uh, it's just secular-minded creators of all types. That is fantastic. Uh, the fu the future's looking good. Yeah, but that's looking really bright. That was the other reason. I guess we'll probably do that like off air. Is we're we're trying to get a mental outlaw here to see if he has any extra time if he'd want to contribute some, you know. Um, I, I, I just, we don't want to put him on the spot on, on live, live air, but yeah, yeah I've got something. I've got something on my mind about what happened uh, to this Jordanian pilot yesterday. I don't know if you saw how they, um, how they took his life uh, oh. yesterday. It wasn't the you know lean down or kneel down but, and, and face the ground with your head and I'll chop your head off. No, this time what they did. Was they took this guy in his in his orange jumpsuit and they put him in a cage, okay? And the cage just had bars. It was, what, it was open on all four sides, or all three sides, or six sides, or whatever. But it had a it had bars all around it on the roof. So what they did was they they um, they doused this guy with with gasoline, okay? So he's wet, and then. They trail the gasoline out outside the cage to to someone, and then somebody who had to I don't know load a match and touched touched the uh, the end of the gasoline trail, and it sort of crept its way up to the cage and got into the cage and then started to envelop the uh, this pilot who's alive. He's standing there with with flames, and he sort of immolated he just, he, like. He just burned to death right there in the open, in the cage, no escape, on camera. It was actually rather horrific. I don't know if anybody saw that, but I just wanted to say that, uh, uh, fuck you, Islam. Oh, did I say that? I'm so sorry. That was yeah, my rant. I, I haven't seen that yet, and um, it, it, this kind of reminds me of just a thought that I had... Um, a couple days ago, I, I get random ass thoughts that come to my head all the time about religious people killing others, executing people in the name of God. You're kind of proving how, how not powerful your God is based on the fact that you have to set a man on fire for him you have to behead people for him. You have to cut the hands off for him. Your God isn't even strong enough to do all this work himself. He has to hire a bunch of fucking barbaric little goons in the desert to do his dirty work for him. So why doesn't your God handle his own fucking business? You know, he why, why can't Allah just will my head to detach from my body here live on camera. Why can't Allah do that? Uh, you saw it here first. <clears throat> yeah. I, I would just like to say that 
I mean, I think it shows how barbaric this really is. You made a really great point, Mental Outlaw. Why can't God enforce his own punishment? Why does he? Uh, why would he want us to do these barbaric things in his name? For us to have the memories, these vile memories of these vile acts. I think that shows that even if that God was real, that's not a sane, moral, caring God. I mean... And not only that, but I, I'm I'm passively uh, sometimes I like to argue from the point of deism. I'm willing to accept maybe there's a God, maybe there is. I don't know, but if there is a God, that God would be ashamed to have acts like that associated with His name. Absolutely ashamed of it. No, not if not if not if the real God was a cunt like the pretend God is. Well, I think I covered that one. That possibility too. <laughs> Yeah, and and I I didn't watch the actual video because fuck that I'm I'm not gonna sit around and watch people get murdered. It's just not my thing. Not into it. But uh, I did watch the White House press briefing. That's one of the things I'm doing now, so other people don't have to torture themselves with some boring ass press interviews <laughs> from the White House. But uh, and and what. It, basically comes down to, and I, we were talking about this a little bit before the show started, was are, is, are the people of ISIS suicidal is what I want to know. I want, I want a professional diagnosis to see if they're suicidal because you don't go around murdering people in front of the world and not expect retaliation. Uh, well, I, I think that that probably has something to do with... Um, Islam and its concept of heaven is, you know, you you go to there's different levels of heaven in Islam, and one of the lev the um, levels is called like al jihad or something like that, and that's I think level four or level three, so it's pretty high up there. If you're murdered, and while you're in the act of jihad, you know, if you're killed on the battlefield or you blow yourself up, you get to go to Al Jihad, which of course has the 72 virgins, or I think it might even be more than 72, and you also get a fresh set of version of virgins every uh, you know, every, every seven, seven years. years. So you know you've got years. a group of men who are so sexually oppressed as uh, you and I kind of talked about in our hangout together they don't have any porn they don't get to fornicate all their women are covered from head to toe in linen even if they could see a tit on the street they wouldn't be able to jack off to it so they're just so fucking pent up that this idea that oh I have this slim one in a million chance to get some pussy if I blow myself up they're willing to take that chance because of how sexually frustrated they are they're willing to go for it it's kinda it's like when you have high schoolers sure. that do crazy ass shit to try to get laid it's kinda the same concept I wouldn't know anything about that <laughs> um, high school? I never went no, uh, <laughs> No, I think you make a really good point, though. <laughs> it, it certainly, sexual repression is a big factor in it, and the, uh, I, you know, I don't think that that was unknown to the writer of the Quran, that this was a problem, this was an issue that, you know, and I think that it plays on that to to basically build and drive that aggression. Oh, crud. Did we want to go into like the history of of Islam a little, like the Muhammad days? I've been watching some stuff on that, and it's insane. You know, so, you know, you know some of the facts that you could uh, share with us. Yeah, like this is just what I've heard from listening to other people that supposedly know more about Islam than I do. But uh, apparently, like Muhammad was illiterate, so he had scribes, and one of the scribes wanted to know if he was really a prophet, so he would test Muhammad and ask him to repeat something that he'd previously said because the scribe had it all wrote down and Muhammad would not be able to recite things exactly as he did the first time so the scribe's like this guy's not talking to God if it was from a God he wouldn't make mistakes so there was you know from day one Islam had some major issues with doubters mm -hmm. whether or not that story <laughs> Go ahead. 
Is Joseph Smith and uh, and Muhammad are they buried kind of next to each other? I was just about to say something about that. I, I'm surprised <laughs> Muhammad didn't try to pull a Joseph Smith and just redo it, but say, "Oh well, God gave me the message again, but it's going to be worded slightly different." I'm surprised Muhammad wasn't smart enough to come up with that um, line of bullshit. Well, the, four, the fourth revised edition. Yeah, apparently, Muhammad, his diplomacy skills was, you either agree with me or I kill you. So that's that's where that was his starting negotiation on any disagreement was, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> so he didn't really resort to excuses right away, let's say. I do nine-year-old with daughters is all I can sing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's really is, it's kind of, it's just, the whole thing is shocking um, that that some of the stuff is taken so seriously. And, it, you know, there are real Muslim reformers out there. We were talking about this last night. And uh, it's very big question to me is what do we need to do to prop up and stand up those true Muslim reformers you know the moderate Muslims who don't want anything to do with ISIS who don't want anything to do with subjugating women or forcing them to wear burqas what can we do to, to stand up those kind of reformers and support them um, it's a tough question and you know I was asking uh, a mutual friend of, uh, anyway, in from Islam and and you know this religion, and even they don't have a great answer to it. You know, um, it's a very difficult question, but I think it's one we need to find the answer to. We need to figure that out. Well, I, uh, my my suggestion always and forever is education, because. The more education a society has, the, the more likely they are to walk away from religion in general. And like if if the kids are hardcore from hardcore fundamentalist parents, the kids grow up and tend to be still religious, but more more secular, more uh, more liberal minded than the parents, and, and so on and so forth. So after three or four generations of having a high quality education. You can literally just breed religion right out of society. Yeah, mm. honestly, it's it's kind of hard for me to take people who say that they're moderate religious or that they're uh, like liberal Christians seriously. Because to me, if you say that you're a moderate Muslim, it's kind of like somebody saying that they're a moderate Nazi to me, where... You might, you might uh, identify with a lot of the things Hitler said. You might think that Hitler had a lot of good ideas, and you might think that many of the ideas of Nazism, um, as far as the political factor goes, are good. But you're still flying under the flag of Nazism. You're still, in a way, associating yourself with people that were responsible for a mass extinction of the Jews. So it, it's kind of hard for me to take someone serious who they're lifting up the Quran, saying that it's a religion of peace, saying that they don't support these beheadings, saying they don't support people being set on fire, saying you don't support honor killings, etc. But you're still holding up the book that tells you to do all those things. It's kind of hard for me to take that seriously. Yeah. Well, I would ask you to, you know, kind of rethink that because look at Christianity. Uh, look how far it came in just two, three hundred years. Uh, this is exactly what happened to Christianity is that real Christian reformers, moderate Christians, became larger, bigger voices as as you said education or as uh, uh, Lou said uh, education became better. Um, this is how this happened to Christianity and it didn't fix everything. That's, that's, that is a factual statement. I mean we still have Christian fundamentalists like the Phelps family, you know, Fred Phelps and all of them uh, at the Westboro Baptist Church. But Look at the broader chunk of society. I mean, even with America's recent resurgence of fundamentalism and Christianity, we're still doing better than we ever have in the past, ever. <laughs> you well, know? 
I mean, I think that makes it worth standing up those moderates, even though we still disagree with those moderate Muslims on a lot of points. Uh, I think that right there is really the example of why it's worth doing that. Yeah, well, like I say, with the education, and you have to build a nice, stable society. I, because why is it that radical Christians here in America are not going around blowing themselves up? And why is it that radical Muslims are blowing themselves up? And when I look at it, what I see is the radical Muslims live in places that don't have jack shit. They have nothing but constant warfare, zero infrastructure, no social safety net, no job security. So why the fuck not blow yourself up, right? So, and that's why I get on the things where everybody wants this war. I mean, yeah, against people like ISIS, you, you kind of got to fight them, you know, with bullets and shit. <laughs> They're that bad. Some things are that bad. But with people that, like, we call them the moderates, we could kill them with kindness. You go in, build roads, build schools, give them fresh water, give them fucking jobs. And guess what? When people have job security and their families eating and having a good life, they'll be a lot less likely to blow themselves up. Didn't they try that in Afghanistan? In, in isolated parts, it's not. It wasn't. Afghanistan's a different scenario than even Iraq. It just. It's. I know, but they try to build roads and schools and infrastructure and all sorts of things. They did in a lot of places. In a lot of places it took and it works, and in a lot of places it didn't because there are so many radicals in, in Afghanistan. Um, the right. population density of radicals is the problem. Uh, I mean, it really is. It's just way worse than it is in Iraq. Um, but I'm sure a lot of cities in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but I'm, just, I'm just saying that. I'm just sorry. I'm saying I, I'm sure that Afghanistan is not a. It's not a polarized society in that you know you got your extreme extremists on one side, which are uh, you know they're the enemy, and then everybody else is moderate. So they you know there's this and, and there's no uh, connection between the two. They they as as if they separate uh, parts of the society. It's I don't think it's like that. I think they all just blend in quite nicely. Well, no, you're right. They do. But there is actually like a statistical line where you could say that. Uh, Th this percentage of them are fairly moderate, while this percentage are somewhere in the middle, and this percentage are more toward the fundamentalist extreme side. Uh, but yet, you're right; they do all live in combination with each other. They're not like right. you know separated into. But within this within this larger picture of a, of the nation, uh, I, the, my best example is to give you is Iraq because that's one I'm much more familiar with. Is that uh, you have the same thing going on there. But you have these pockets, uh, these little isolated areas where there's a nice little city. It's well defended, and it's very modern. Uh, there's a lot of technology and commercialism and business. Uh, young girls can walk around without burkas freely and just jeans and T-shirts like they do here, and they're safe. Um, there are those little pockets of isolated sanity out there uh, mm -hmm. that, that are well worth defending for the, the freedoms those people get to enjoy. And so you have this kind of going on in Afghanistan as well. Um, it's just to a lesser degree, and because of the higher degree of radicals, you know, the higher number. But yeah, they're all kind of in, intermingled and living together. I mean, like I said, you get these isolated, isolated pockets, and they generally don't attack those areas as much because they are so well defended. I mean, they don't have a hope or a prayer almost, you know, and and it's much more easy for them out there to go and attack these easy targets. You know, the non defended well, yeah. cities. Well, um, as, as far as um, Islam becoming moderate, one of the best ways I think that it can be made um, moderate to remove a lot of these, um, you know, atrocities that are being committed in its name is if people stop taking Islam so seriously. Because like I was saying, if you have, if you believe that there's a God who is all-knowing and all-powerful. And if you believe that this God said X, Y, Z, it's kind of hard to not take X, Y, Z seriously. So if we were to, instead of looking at Islam from a standpoint of these are God's commands, and look at it from a standpoint of philosophy 
and focus more on the good things that are in um, Islam, then you can have it be more moderate because obviously if you're looking at it from a philosophical standpoint, you're not going to be thinking, kill the infidel. Kill the infidel is a command from God. But you don't have that with the philosophical part of it. Um, oh, Craig, I actually wanted to get this you know, a, a minute or two ago because I think it kind of relates with how you want to achieve a goal, what kind of a plan you come up with. And I think a lot of people have forgotten or just haven't don't know that domestic terrorists, like as far as Muslims are concerned, they like you. We they have to be domestic. These people are not coming from overseas to do terrorism. Mostly, they usually do it right there in their home home nation. But they found out most of the domestic Muslim terrorists are first generation immigrants. So. They grow up in, in these strict fundamentalist Muslim cultures with their, their parents, and then when they go to school, they're isolated because the culture where their school is does not mix with their, their family culture. And so they're isolated, and like you guys said, sexually frustrated builds into that too. Yeah. 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 Because people, the right wing tries to set it up, well, the terrorists were upper middle class people. No, they were kids of upper middle class people. Yeah, that's that's definitely uh, something that'll factor in, is if you, you know, if you can't make any friends and if you can't really fill into the culture that well, um, what I would ask is, what is the reason that they're not able to fill in to the culture that well. Because something I've noticed a lot is um, people who tend to be fundamentally a part of one religion, they tend to not like to mingle with people who are parts of other religions. Um, like something that my grandmother told me, my grandmother is pretty much a fundamentalist Christian. When I was growing up, she told me that I could not marry a Muslim girl or a Hindu girl, an atheist, a pagan girl, etc., that the only type of girl I could marry would have to be a Christian girl. So that's that's that um I think the what's the word for it? It's a uh, xenophobia. Yeah, that's kind of like the xenophobia that you have thrown in with uh in any fundamentalist religion really. So again, I think that that's part, that's part of it that just magnifies the isolation, the being alone, the sexual frustration, which eventually can incubate into terrorism. And this is where I kind of a, a, I'll partially agree with the people that are like moderate Muslims need to participate in reforming their, their own religion and, and where where I'll partially agree there is church leadership does play a role because think about it if you're from a fundamentalist background and you're feeling isolated at school and stuff where are you going to take your problems to if you don't feel comfortable talking to your parents you're going to go and talk to the priest right so what do Catholic priests the ones that don't bugger little boys at least tell their flock when when a young teen comes in it's like I feel isolated and, and all alone Catholic priests actually have mental health training they have actual degrees in this stuff so I want to see what the, the Muslim the imams or whatever you call them are telling those their kids you know what kind of difference is that oops sorry yeah as, as far as what the um um, what the imams are telling people. I, I've only been to a couple of mosques in my lifetime, so I, I, I don't think I'm the most qualified person to say what the um, imams are telling people. But I haven't heard too many stories from Muslims I've talked to, and again in my own experience of imams being very uh, very liberal minded and I don't think that having a mental health degree is part of that either 
again, the ones I've met, they didn't have mental health degrees, or at least they didn't display them in their offices. You know, most people who have degrees tend to display them. So that's 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 a good idea. Maybe if the um, if being a, a, an Islamic leader required you to have a mental health degree, or it required you to have a more liberal mindset, that would certainly help with the situation. Well, well, I I don't I don't like mandates. I have a problem with authority, and my in me it's a lot stronger than your average person. But we need to, politically speaking, liberals need to work with libertarians on certain issues. Okay, it's the only way to get a majority vote sometimes, right? So I think instead of making a mandate, why couldn't we make it a uh, what do you call it like available to Imams say if you're an imam here in America with your own mosque or whatever, your local community college will allow you to go there and and take counseling courses for free. You know, and because we do that, we have a uh, we do that for like racial differences and stuff too. What do you call that stuff again? I forget. You know, like how schools have quotas for certain different backgrounds of people get better, you know, extra help. Oh, where you got to have like a certain number of Asian kids and like black kids and stuff? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. It's kind of, I don't know, I don't think there's one word for it. There's other, there's examples of it like affirmative action or oh, that's it. Affir um, just calling it a quota. Well, affirmative action is a very specific thing kind of, so, but it's not, in a broader sense, there's not, I don't think there's really one good word for for all of that. It's just... A quota of what of X, and and a lot of the way we get these programs off the ground is through uh, tax cuts. It's funny because you know certain people's like increasing and other certain people like lowering taxes. This is one of those areas you can find common ground on. It's little tax things like this. You can say, why don't we give a tax cut to colleges that gives that give uh, extra funding for this class of people, so you, you get things moving with the tax cut instead of a policy decision, like a you know side skirt the entire uh, social political debate. In fact, hey guys, I'll be right back. Give me just a minute. Yeah, puppy's going out there. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what your guys' side is with the, as far as implementation. Well, I think that the, the, the promotion of the secular agenda is by far the most important uh, item on the list. Um, I, I'm kind of one of those people who believes that once theism is behind us and once we've, we've all reached the level of sanity uh, and reason uh, that, we sh that, that we're capable of, I think that all these issues that are today issues will work themselves out. People will people will think clearly, uh, and they'll be able to, you know, have an open mind when they uh, approach any of these issues. Um, with a secular, with a secular world, or in a secular world. We have no choice but to progress. There is no going backwards. I'm, excuse me, I have a phone call here. Oh my goodness, tech fails and animals. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I kind of have to agree on the theism part of it. That's, that's sort of what I was trying to get into when I was talking earlier, is I think Islam would be a lot better off without Allah. Because if you believe in Allah and you believe that he is this all-knowing supreme being, and you believe that he's giving you these commands or that he's had these commands written down in his book, it's kind of hard to not take them seriously and to not see them as good if he's to be framed as this all-benevolent being, regardless of what it is that he's saying. You know, if you have this guy that's truly all good and truly all knowing, then I can understand how you might think kill the infidel is a good thing. 
So if, like yeah. I was saying, if Islam were to be looked at from a strictly philosophical standpoint and you just look at the moral teachings that they have to offer versus the commands from Allah and you look at it as a cultural phenomenon instead of something given from God, I think it would be a lot better off and I think there would be a lot less violence with it. In general, people just got to start taking it a little less seriously. Uh, that's really the bottom line. Yeah. Well, where was I? Well, the whole theism, the whole culture of theism, and I drive past churches and I see people congregating, and uh, I just feel offended, and I can't help but feel offended when, when, I, when I see this type of uh, activity going on. Um, People living in mass lie, a mass delusion. It bothers me. It really does. It's. It, I don't know. I might be labeled more as a religious the, theist, having a phobia of theists, because it's like, you know, one or two or whatever or a group here and there doesn't bother me. But when I go by a church and I see a full parking lot, that place just turns ultra creepy in my eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like a den of bad. <laughs> a, a den of Dickens. A den of I don't want to go in there because it's scary and dangerous feeling. Well, now you. you I just want to go in there. Gonna call it I a just want to go in there. Sorry, I just wanted to go into these places and save the children. That's what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yes, especially if it's a cathedral. Uh, but the thing is, if you're going to call it a phobia, you have to remember that a phobia is an irrational fear. Oh, okay. If fear is justified, then it's not irrational. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Hazus, I hate Good to point. Is that, is, does that sort of make it a little clearer? Maybe, maybe it's rational because I tend to dress like a Amish cross-dresser. So, church <laughs> people are very happy with my parents. Well, I'd say you are what you wear, right? <laughs> well, you know, I just want to add this on there. Like you say, you hate Islam. Um, I don't find that to be a particularly, you know, strong statement, really. Because, But I think a lot of people may take that the wrong way. You know, yeah. there's a big difference in saying this is a bad idea. Okay, it's not the people. The people we want to save, we want to bring them around and show them reason. It's it's not the people we hate. It's it's the bad idea that's making people do bad things. And the bad idea is Islam. And it's perfectly acceptable to say that you hate an idea. There are ideas out there that are so fucking bad. I hate them. That's just it's just a fact. Uh, right. Chopping people's heads off was a bad idea in the first place. And so. You know, that's one of those ideas I can say that I'm particularly revolted by, and that it was a all, it was a bad idea always. And so, okay. well, I yeah. need you to address the good people of Tumblr then, because it seems like every time I put up a <laughs> picture of the Prophet Muhammad, I get a bunch of messages of people calling me racist. So, how's about you take over my Tumblr page and address my fans? Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, there is. Like, uh, I think Sam Harris said it best. Liberals have really kind of failed us on the issue of Islam. Oh, that's yeah, one. Place, really have. Yeah, that's one place I'm with Sam on because I have disagreements with Sam, but on that one, yeah, I'm totally with him because he's not saying hate or fear Islam any more than anything else. He's just saying no, the moderates are a part of the problem. Well, they're, they're certainly, you know, outside of the rad what we call the radicals and the terrorists. There are still uh, a great many what we would, you know, when I use moderate, I use moderate in the sense of the Christian version of moderate Christianity. Uh, in Islam, a moderate Islam, a moderate Muslim is not the same thing. They are, you know, by and large, anyway, the the. The majority of what we would call moderate Muslims for that version of a religion would be uh, people who still hold some, as Sam said, some of these pernicious ideas, such as the subjugation of women or the, the you know, the mistreatment of gays um, or transgender people. Uh, those are some examples of these bad ideas that a lot of the moderate Muslim world still holds holds on to. People that don't want anything to do with ISIS or terrorism or any of that stuff. They still hold on to a lot of those bad ideas. But well, there are true... I want to add this one more thing. 
There yeah. are still what we, I would call true reformers, people who are basically secular-minded believers in Islam, people who don't hold mo almost any of those pernicious ideas. They don't want to subjugate gays. They don't are women. They don't want to mistreat gays. Uh, they want equality, and there there are some Muslims like that, and that's the ones that I talked about earlier. Those are the ones we need to find them and prop their voice up and make them a bigger voice. Indeed. Yeah, and uh, I before we carry on. Before we carry on, guys, I just want to uh, remind everybody out there that uh, you're watching uh, Reason Speak, and we are on Secular TV on the web. Secular TV is uh, is uh, a, a nonprofit organization that has the goal uh, of helping promote unique and interesting content while focusing on a variety of diverse ideas that appeal to various groups in the secular community and I've just been reminded that we're not yet a non-profit but I believe we will be that is the goal we, we do we do want to be a non-profit organization um, right now I mean the leadership behind secular TV have no intention to profit directly off of secular TV uh, there's none of that going on everything that you know the network produces is being pumped right back into the shows the basic costs of the network our web website and podcast hosting and all these other services we want to provide for content creators and so what we get out of this as the leadership as the management of secular TV is that we hope we have shows on the network and we want our network to do well because we want our shows to do well. We, we get the same benefits uh, that we offer all the other content creators. And so uh, we are not a nonprofit yet. That is the eventual goal. But we do operate in the spirit of a nonprofit. So there is no intention to profit directly off of this uh, as secular TV. The shows on the network, however, individual shows like your own show, we do want to help you guys find sponsors, someone who will sponsor your show directly uh, and pay you to plug their book or something like that um, so that you guys can make a little money, upgrade your equipment, your laptop, your mic, um, cameras, things like that. I mean, that is a goal for us for our shows. But uh, no, secular TV isn't going to make any money directly, and uh, there will be no profiteering there. Yeah, and so thank you very much. And as far as that, as the nonprofit part, we, a lot of us contribute to just like tutorial stuff for content creators, very various mm -hmm. aspects of how to, how to use YouTube effectively, how how to work on your settings, uh, graphics programs, tutorials. And like I said, I picked up a lot of tips from a lot of people on this channel. That's that's increasing the quality of my content on, on my own channel and that's what we want. We want all of us to have better content, to be able to make better content. Yeah, and there's a lot of educational minded stuff going on behind the scenes. We want to do everything we can to find the best people to show people how to do anything and everything better. Um, and so, yeah, I mean that is one of our big goals is just, I mean, I've been doing this for years and I can learn something right now. And so you can always learn more. There's always someone who can teach you or show you a trick you haven't seen before. And so, yeah, that's a, that's a big part of it is just teaching people in general how to do all of this kind of stuff we do better. Uh, managing social media, even outside of just making videos. Managing social media or managing accounts, managing their own PayPal and donation systems. Uh, you know, helping manage their private channel better. All of that kind of stuff. I mean, anything we can do to help. We've been uh, helping find guests, hosts. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a huge list. <laughs> I can't even one remember thing, it all off my head. One thing we can do is we can work, you know, you were talking earlier or, or just prior to uh, regarding the modern, modern Muslims. Yeah. Um, well, we could work with them. We we certainly have a platform uh, which mm -hmm. is uh, potentially reachable, which, which will potentially reach anybody, and we need we need some participation from from these moderate Muslims. They need to rear their heads, come on the show, wear a mask if you have to, if you don't uh, uh, you know identify yourself. But let's get a plan together. Let's work together to 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 rid the scourge this. This cancer of of Islam, just 
yuck, let's just cut it out and, and, and throw it away and incinerate it. Well, I'm I mean, pretty passionate about that. I would certainly extend the invite to any any of the viewers who, who know someone who makes content like this, any secular-minded theist, whether they're Christians or Muslims, uh, who, who really do see the problems in these religions and want to help speak out against it and help reform their religion, uh, this is a platform for you to do it and invite, and invite all of you to come contact us, speak with us, and we will work with you, talk about shows, help set up things. Uh, I'd love to help you know those kind of people be a bigger voice. Yeah. Well said. Um, I wanted to ask real quick about the tutorials. Um, I know a thing or two about Sony Vegas, and I, I know it's not the industry standard. I'm also pretty good at audio engineering, which is why my voice kind of sounds like shit now, but when you watch my videos, it's got that nice booming effect to it. Uh, any chance I can do a tutorial for that? And if so, how would I send the video to you? How would you want it sent? Uh, well, the general process is is that we invite people to become a manager of the channel. YouTube is uh, has a system uh, of business channels, so under that you can add multiple managers. That person under their own account, it's linked to their their original YouTube account, by the way. So, but uh, they log into their account, and when that happens, after they've accepted, there will be a new account that pops up under the drop down automatically and you'll be able to log directly in a secular TV and upload your content as a content creator and so it's just like a second channel that you manage exactly interesting that, that way you could upload directly so you don't have to pass things around the long way yep hmm. okay yeah that, and, that's that's kind of interesting and uh, one of our one of our three viewers uh, is showing enthusiasm for the Vegas idea. Vegas. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, ideas about OBS. We can try talk about that off air or something. So, lots of good ideas, I think. Well, we certainly love good ideas. We love all kinds of ideas. Uh, you know, originally, in part of the the founding of this network. Uh, I had a Facebook group that I never made public and I always wanted to do. It was called the Marketplace of Ideas. And it was where ideas would just be exchanged freely. There's no censorship. There's no, you know. Uh, and there were places like this around Facebook, other groups. Uh, the Cult of Dusty Facebook page used to be this way. Uh, I actually found that Facebook group before I ever found Dusty Smith's videos. And so... Uh, but yeah, the Facebook group used to be that way, and and then it just went all to hell. So, but that that concept of free speech and the free exchange of ideas and the best ideas will win. No need for censorship of any kind. I loved that idea. It you know, and and so that's a lot of what is in the inspiration of secular TV. You know, we don't need that kind of censorship. We don't need to filter content creators. We don't need to tell them what they can or can't do. I mean, we are here to offer ideas and help, but at the end of the day, they own their show, and they own all the rights to it. They own all the, you know, if they want to sell T-shirts, that's all their money. Um, you know, we want to inspire that same free speech, get out there and just do your thing kind of environment. Hmm. Well, yeah, um, what, what, what kind of network are you talking about? Are you talking about like a... I think it's called like Mark or Glenn or something type deal because I know there's certain networks on YouTube where they they kind of get a cut of your ad rev ad, of your ad revenue and um, for that they give you things like uh, royalty free music that you can use in your videos. They can kind of uh, protect you from certain things like false flagging campaigns, DMCAing, etc. So would that be something that you could offer as a network? Eventually, yes. Uh, a lot of the systems will fall into place in the same way as those do. Uh, it's, it's not quite the same, though. Um, so, there. I mean, this is a big speech to give the whole financial <laughs> breakdown. Uh, I do it pretty regularly, though. And, and actually, me and Dee sat down last night and finally kind of worked it out all on paper, put it in print, so that we can have some of the other leaders start doing the interviews. 
But uh, right now, are w really what it is, because there's so many content creators here on one channel. Uh, this is just a springboard. You know, everyone who's been involved is seeing pro growth on their private channel, and so this is just another place for you to put some of your content to help it get seen alongside other great content creators. Um, here on this network, we can protect this content. We can fight for a lot of that content. Outside of it, we can't really help you with your private channel and fighting that stuff directly. We can't advise you. I mean, we, I've been fighting with YouTube videos and the copyright stuff for years, six years at this point. Um, I had a partnered successful gaming channel. Uh, you know, I was getting paid for that. And so I did do a lot of that stuff building up to that point, just constant, you know, if, you know, fair use and citing that, and, I, and so yeah, we have. It's not just me though. We have a lot of people with experience in that kind of stuff. So we can help with the private channels. Um, we can help show you what can work, what won't. Um, we've already been doing a little bit of that, and uh, but eventually, as we grow, I mean, we're a new network. We stood up December second, and so just this, you know, last month. <laughs> <laughs> the month before last, anyway. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's pretty new. But, yeah, we want to have real good systems in place for all of that stuff. Right now, it's just us in our development group uh, showing people, hey, this is kind of what you can say to this thing. This is what you can say to that thing. This is what you can use. This is what you can't use. And it's mostly us just guiding the process and teaching people manually. But eventually we'll have enough tutorial of the videos, we'll have enough typed out materials that we can present this in a much more formal way. Uh, kind of having hammered it out as this is what we think works, this is what we think is presentable. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, a lot of it's just, it's not, I can't call it common sense because you can't know about it until you know about it. But like, <laughs> You know, but hey, put tags on your freaking in the tag section. Yeah, you know, things like that. Simple stuff. Yeah. You put relevant tags. Don't put little bullshit tags in there either. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we're all pretty much, for the most of it, most part, I think most of us are, as far as YouTube wise, we're just amateurs, really. So, like I said, you get a more com comprehensive. A set of skills just by having so many amateurs that have just figured things out on their own, you know. Yeah. And uh, I have recently started doing uh, a content creator class series of videos where it's just me walking everyone through the basic steps of secular TV, how they're using the accounts, how they can use them to go advertise themselves, uh, just the basic processes and steps to becoming a manager or becoming a content creator and then a little more in-depth stuff now that you're uploading videos what to do and now that you're doing this or using logos what to do and we're going to expand on on that uh, just as time goes on eventually I mean we'll have a pretty good solid large series of tutorials on all this all this kind of stuff that we want to show people so Eventually, I think this will be a really great educational resource uh, for content creators. Yeah, and I want to see it become like a, a go-to channel for like 24-7 YouTube content. Live YouTube content? Is that what you're getting at? Live or pre-recorded. Um, but yeah, uh, seeing the show is basically new. around the clock. Yeah, that's that's the goal. Right now, we can only have 50, 50 managers. Um Eventually, I think YouTube is going to see that they're going to need to increase that cap, and so I think they'll probably work that out. I hope. Um, but once we can have more than that, yeah, I'm absolutely all for booking this channel around the clock. Right now, we're already producing some of the most diverse list of content that come out of one channel. I think almost anywhere on YouTube, um, it's not the most content, but I think it really is the most diverse list of content. And then uh, Farinor is bringing up, talking about OBS. I don't know if that's an option for us. He said you can have one person have it open as a robot, and then people can just disconnect and connect for their shows all at, all on one stream eventually. Sounds complex. Sounds expensive. Yeah. No, I kind of like right now the, 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 the freedom for shows, that they come in. They're totally in control. They're... 
I mean, I've seen that kind of thing, and you know, I don't, I don't know. I think most of our content creators would rather just, you know, come log in, do their show, and get out. Uh, I don't know. We'll, you know, we can talk you know about the it. goal. The goal is to spread secularism. The goal, the goal is to show people out there who don't use their common sense and and rational thinking skills that it's okay to do that. It's okay to think. It's okay to think critically. It really is. That's the goal here. Uh, secular TV, I guess, is the is the means by which we wish to spread this uh, this message and and uh, and uh, bring attention to uh, to the fact that uh, the world needs to be secular. This this experiment with with religion um, being part of governments and uh, and ruling classes it, it's a failure. It's out of there. It's gone. So, so really, the goal of secular TV is to help promote unique and interesting content while focusing on a variety of diverse ideas that appeal to various groups in the secular community. And that, and as as Randy, uh, as Randy has previously commented, uh, that is the the reason for the existence of secular TV. Yeah, normalized uh, secularism. Right. Now, our hour is up, so um, I would like to, if possible, carry on a few more minutes because um, I get the feeling that Kenny, that, that mental outlaw has something to say still. I have something to what? Ah, yeah, yeah, some, some last words. Yeah. Something, last, something profound. My last, last words. Uh, well, as always, I enjoyed being on. Um, it, it was nice to get uh, to meet a foxhole atheist. You're the vice president? I'm the president. Right. Yeah, oh, the president. Yeah, it was nice to meet you to kind of get some uh, ideas about, um, you know, what's really going on with this network, uh, what you guys want to do in the future. It's, it's nice to get that kind of inside information. Excellent. Yeah, no problem. Oh, and, and and Randy, thank you so much for uh, for taking the time to come on and spend the hour with us. Um, a wealth of information has flowed out into this uh, into this hangout, making it much more valuable. Yeah, thank it you was again. Very enjoyable. Um, okay, I just want to say that uh, I have a private channel. It's called Ask an Atheist. On YouTube, Lou has a private channel called Lou Pliskin on YouTube. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, watching the show today, and uh, I'm going to hand it over to Lou to uh, wrap it up for us. Lou? Oh, I hate wrapping up. Uh, no, I just always like to let everybody, all, all three viewers, so we have the, and for people to watch it later, that I always link to everybody's. Uh, individual channels and of course there'll be subscription links somewhere in this segment on the screen somewhere so you can check out all, all of our guests and and whatnot at your leisure anybody else right on. thank you Lou just remember everybody be secular <laughs> <laughs>